in this week's video. I'm going to show you how to turn this into this, which doesn't seem all that impressive until you realize you can turn it into this and this and this. Stay tuned. Okay, here I've got the final piece that I'm going to cast a sheet of half inch MDF that I've cut slightly smaller than the base of the original, uh, about a half inch, maybe inch diameter smaller. And here I am tracing out the outline of the piece on a sheet of eighth inch MDF. Now this is, this is something I'm going to use to give me a perimeter for the, the mold walls. There's Blink being nosy. Here I'm just using a pair of calipers to, to score around the base. Uh, I'm giving myself about an inch beyond the final piece so that I can set up that mold wall. It may actually be closer to three quarters of an inch. Here I'm just going back, tracing around that line. Giving myself something that's, that I know is gonna be easy to follow later. Here I am gluing the final piece to that, that base of MDF. Now the reason I'm, I'm gluing this standoff, this, uh, this base that I'm making here, or that I've, that I've made out of MDF, is so there's an edge underneath the final part so that I don't have to cast right to that edge and worry about resin spilling over. Uh, this is going to act as a, as a lip in the final mold piece. Um, it's somewhat confusing now, but once you see it, it'll make a little more sense. Uh, basically, it's just kind of a Eh, a safety feature to, to keep me from spilling resin everywhere when I'm casting in urethane. So yeah, hot gluing that down. Now that outline that I drew earlier on that sheet of masonite that I'm going to be gluing this down to that outlines acting as a a guide so that I know where to set this down firmly press there make sure that you've got a complete bead around that so again silicone doesn't doesn't seep in underneath there that's what I'm doing here with the hot glue gun just making every making sure everything's sealed up I'm going to go around the edges here, just make sure everything's sealed up. Uh, you don't really want a bunch of silicone seeping in, seeping in there, getting in between your, your piece and that base. This is a pretty important step. Blink again. Now, I've got some pieces of cardstock that I'm going to use as my mold walls. You can use aluminum if you want to, uh, like flashing, aluminum flashing, but I, this stuff's fine. I've used it a ton of times. If I were making a mold that was, I don't know, pretty substantial, something much larger than this, I'd, I'd probably go with something a little more heavy duty, but I've got confidence in this cardboard or cardstock. 
I've probably made 50 molds this way. Now something you do want to make sure of is that you get a complete bead of glue the entire, uh, the entire way around here. I'm just kind of blowing on that, trying to cool it off. And right now I'm just, just tacking this uh, cardstock into place. I'm not worried about having it watertight or silicone tight at this point. Just trying to make sure I get the, the perimeter, everything buttoned down there. Now I'm going to come back and put a continuous bead of hot glue all the way around this thing. The last thing you want is $100 worth of silicone leaking onto your floor. I'm going to put some bracing, just glue some bracing down to keep everything from, from bulging out. I'm trying to split those walls once it's full of eight pounds of silicone. hot gluing a little a little bracing here nothing too substantial I don't need anything crazy There's another piece. Those were really the only three areas that I was worried about. Uh, the silicone trying to bulge the cardstock out of out of square there, out of ninety perpendicular to the floor or the the base actually. Here I'm just going to be pouring a, a block mold. I'm not going to not going to try to do any crazy fancy mold techniques with this. This is really the best way that I can do this. Here I'm getting ready to mix up some silicone. Now, what I'm using is a tin cure silicone. Here I am just, just spraying this down with some mold release. I used to use a vegetable oil-based mold release that was food safe. And I thought this was it. I was wrong. So I didn't have any sort of a ventilation set up. I don't think it's going to cause me to grow an extra arm or liquefy my lungs or anything but there we go I'm a dummy okay here I am taking my vacuum chamber pot I'm just gonna pour the silicone directly into it this is a, a tin cure silicone it's a 10 to 1 ratio uh, silicone to, to catalyzer you do need to degas this stuff you can you can make a mold without degassing it but you're gonna have a ton of air bubbles your molds just not gonna hold up using a vacuum chamber and degassing really is the best way to get a, a quality silicone mold now for a block mold like this it's it's fairly difficult to uh, to calculate exactly how much silicone you're gonna need something I thought about doing but didn't do in this situation was just using rice something like uh, something like rice or maybe some beans that have not been cooked you, you don't want to go with like a can of you know baked beans or anything but some dried pinto beans or or something like that 
could be helpful in determining your your silicon volume. I I was sure that I was going to need a gallon. I was I was 100% certain. Uh, I just I just was. I figured I was actually going to need about a gallon and a half, but uh, it worked out uh, that I only needed a gallon. So. Here I am pouring in this hardener and I'm mixing. Now, if I were not degassing this, this would be a terrible, terrible way to mix this. But I know that I'm getting a good mix here. I know that I'm going to be able to get the air bubbles out in the vacuum chamber. So I'm not worried about introducing a bunch of air into the silicone. Uh, that's, that's not a problem in, in this specific instance. <coughs> Now, I could be, you know, stirring this up with a paint stick and it would take me, oh, 15 minutes and wear my arms out. So I decided to just use a drill. Here I'm setting up my vacuum chamber. This is a, a 6 CFM 2? Two? 2 or 3 horsepower motor. I think it's a two horsepower. Anyways, vacuum chamber. Turning it on. Degassing. I'm checking the, uh, checking the gauge here. Now, this stuff is going to expand mm, probably three or four hundred percent. It's ridiculous. Uh, you need to keep an eye on that. Sometimes you need to turn your pump off and let your let your silicon uh, chill out a little bit, so it doesn't doesn't overfill. You can see the the silicon level raising here. It's essentially boiling the all that air I incorporated out. Here I'm checking the gauge, backing it off a little bit. Here I'm turning the pump back on. Just I'm just trying to keep that silicon level from, from expanding so much that it sucks up into my pump. The air has been released. Here I'm releasing the vacuum. I've always done this slowly. I don't think it makes much of a difference. It certainly makes a difference when you're uh, depressurizing um, using a pressure pot. Using a vacuum chamber, I'm not sure. So I'm going to err on the side of caution there. Okay. It's time to, to start filling this thing. Now, like I said, I knew that I was going to need a gallon of silicone. That was only half a gallon. I actually did two pours here. Um, I just, I couldn't pour it all at one time. This is a two and a half gallon vacuum chamber. If I had gone with an entire gallon of of silicone it would have I just wouldn't have been able to to degas that properly without it overflowing or overfilling here I'm pouring uh, pouring the silicone I'm pouring it high you really shouldn't need to do that if you've degassed your silicone uh, it helps break up air bubbles but ah, why not I'm just gonna err on the side of caution here also, something that I've noticed a lot of people on YouTube do, um, maybe less experienced uh, mold makers, is they pour the silicone everywhere, like over the entire surface of the mold. What you want to do is find a, a single spot, a low spot, 
and pour there. You don't want to move it all around and, and try to cover the whole, whole surface. You'll end up introducing a ton of air. It's not air in your silicone, it's that you're trapping air. You want to find one spot, pour in that one spot, and let it level out by itself. Now, something else I haven't shown in this video is making sure my, my surface is completely level, my workbench there. Um, this isn't something I measure every time. I, I know that, you know, I know that my surface is level, so I don't, I just kind of take that for granted. Here I'm mixing up a second batch of silicone to finish off that, that mold. There's a silicon level rising as the air is escaping. I'm checking it again just to, uh, just to keep it from, from overflowing. I wouldn't say it's a tedious project or process, but it takes a little patience. It can be scary if it's something you've never done before. Intimidating, I guess, more so than scary, but here we are. Okay, releasing the vacuum, again, slowly, though I don't know why. Putting my mold back into position. And again, I go with the high bore. Also, there, there are the phones that I was using for, for secondary camera shots that the footage just didn't, uh, didn't work out. I'm working on becoming a better editor, cameraman. It's, it's a slow process, let me tell you. A few weeks ago, I had never touched a, a video camera or tried to record or edit anything. So apologies for the, <laughs> for the quality of this. I'm working on it. YouTube tutorials are great for such things. But yeah, this silicone, in the video it's showing up, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the, uh, I have no idea what it is. But anyways, it's, it's looking like possibly I didn't mix this very well. I mixed this extremely well. Maybe my catalyst ratio was slightly off, but Eh, I don't know. Anyways, the mold worked out. And that's something else with, uh, with silicone. You want to make sure that you mix the hell out of this stuff. The last thing you want is, is uncured, uncured silicone and a, a damaged, damaged part because you didn't, didn't mix as well as you should. As you can see, the silicon is dry. This is the next day. And here I am removing that, uh, that barrier that I put up. I did not have any leaks, thankfully. That's always brutal. Um, you can, uh, if you do end up with a leak, you can catalyze that with a, a something like a hot glue gun but you don't want to if you don't have to here I am pulling the part from the mold this can this can be a bit 
tedious. You don't want to rip the mold. You don't want to destroy the piece, even though I threw the piece away like a dummy. I've started to break it free here. This can be a process. Patience is key here. Uh, you don't want to get get hasty or overzealous and, and damage. It's pulling free. I'm taking it nice and slow. And voila. Now there's there's a couple of little rocks and, and ballast that I'm going to need to pull out of here. Honestly, the uh, first resin pour is a great way to get a lot of that, uh, a lot of that excess material out. But I'm still going to try to get out what I can. No reason not to, really. Okay, here I am setting it back on that base. I'm going to keep this piece of, uh, piece of masonite. I'm just going to use it whenever I pour this thing, whenever I uh, do castings. It's going to help stabilize the mold because I'm not doing a solid pour here. I'm going to, mm, I guess, roto cast this. Little mold release, which generally I don't use, but Considering this is a the first first pull, I'm I'm going to just to I don't know make me feel a little better about the situation. But yeah, this uh, this specific silicone is a Tincure T124 that I got from Brick in the Yard Mold Making Company. Uh, this stuff generally doesn't need release, especially if you're going to be painting. Here I am putting cornstarch in the mold, which may seem strange, but it's it's going to help the urethane find find all the little nooks and crannies in the mold, uh, so that I don't lose any detail. Now you want to make sure that you get the vast majority of this stuff out. All you need is a very light dusting. Uh, this is not something I do every pour, uh, just because I've not poured in this mold yet. I'm giving it every opportunity to succeed. Now, I'm sure there are going to be uh, little air bubbles here and there in the final piece. That's something hopefully I'll be able to remedy later uh, just by learning the mold, uh, learning the best way to pour it. It really is a mold by mold basis. It may seem seem strange, but once you uh, once you get into mold making, you kind of realize that no, no two molds are exactly the same. Uh, appearance and size aside uh, the way they pour the way you cast in them it it really varies now this is the urethane resin i'm going to be using it's a uh, two-part one-to-one ratio urethane sets up in about two and a half minutes so you get a pretty quick working time here this stuff is called easy flow 60 again i got that from uh brick in the yard they've got a youtube channel which is actually really helpful. I got out of casting for quite a few years and I've been watching some of their videos as something of a refresher course. I've actually learned quite a lot. I mean there was there was plenty of stuff that you know I knew beforehand and just kind of watch those videos as a, a little bit of a refresher, something to uh, help build build my confidence back up that yes I am doing this correctly but Quite a few new skills I've learned just by watching their channel. So now this stuff you wanna you wanna mix well, but again you've only got about two and a half minutes of working time here. I usually spend I'd say thirty seconds mixing, and this is four ounces of part A, four ounces of part B. 
I'm going to do this twice. 16 ounces of resin is going to give me a strong final piece that isn't full. The last thing I want to do is completely fill this part with resin. And I mean, sure, the cost of the resin is a, a reason for that. But honestly, the main reason is when you set this piece of terrain down on the on your gaming board, if it's got a completely flat bottom surface as opposed to being hollow, it's not going to sit completely flat unless you're using uh, like a, a gaming mat. If you're using actual tiles or a, a tabletop, you want, you want a little bit of uh, room in there to make room for the grass flocking or uh, ballast, unless you're using a gaming mat. And this way, by pouring it hollow, essentially doesn't matter if you're playing on a completely flat surface or something that's got a little bit of texture. Now here I'm just rotating this around making sure that I'm getting a, a fairly even coating of resin in the mold. Doing this once is, is no problem. Uh, making 10 of these pieces, your arms are going to be tired, let me tell you. You can tell the resin starting to set up. I'm, it's getting a lot thicker than it was. I'm able to uh, to spin this slower and you know get it a lot higher without having to worry about uh, resin spilling. Now, like I said, I'm doing a, did two pours there. Um, four ounces of A, four ounces of B. I let that dry. Then I did a second pour. It's the exact same as the first pour. I just didn't didn't show that for, for time's sake. I think these videos are going to run a little long as it is, so. Here I am breaking the, the piece free from the mold, taking my time. Now, I've given this casting 30 minutes to set up. The work time on that resin is two and a half minutes. The cure time is more like 30 to 45. The last thing you want to do is, is pull, your, pull your resin casting early and warp it. Let this thing set up completely before you try to pull it out of the mold. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a warped piece. That's going to bum you out. Okay, the part, part sits flat. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on the underside there, uh, but nothing too crazy. Everything's worked out. And there's the process. All right, that concludes the silicon mold making and casting tutorial. Next week's video is going to cover painting, flocking, water effects, that sort of thing. Uh, like, subscribe. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.